Hi, my name is Carl Jackson and I'm founder and CTO of Sensel. The presentation um, that I'm going to present to you is the exhibitor presentation from the IEEE NSS MIC and for those of you who could not make it to the show or wanted to catch up after the show we have uh, done a voiceover for the presentation to give you some of the latest information about Sensel's detectors and our technology. So to start off I'll tell you some of some quick facts about Sensel. Our business is low light sensors and that's all that we do. We are selling these sensors into the following markets medical imaging, homeland security, lidar and into the biophotonics market. The model that we operate under is as a fabulous semiconductor company so all of our production is outsourced with high volume uh, mainstream CMOS um, uh, wafer manufacturers and and packaging suppliers uh, who make the the products um, uh, in front of you on the screen. Our headquarters are based in Cork, Ireland and we have a sales office um, with our VP of Sales and Marketing and Director of North American Sales in Boston and we have a sales office that's opened in China in Beijing to serve some of our Asian customers. Some of the highlights since last year's IEEE NSS MIC back in 2011. The first is that we're launching officially our third generation SPM which we call the M series and that's available now. Uh, this is a technology with uh, an increased PDE and we've got something really neat that I'm going to show and talk to you about today known as fast mode which gives very ultra fast timing options to our customers. We'll be launching this uh, new technology in a very exciting surface mount package which is four side tileable and this drives really a new price to performance ratio uh, it's very low cost with very very high performance and we think that this gives our customers very very flexible uh, means of making uh, PCB arrays as shown here on the right hand side 144 channel uh, 3 millimeter array for, for prototyping and also for high volume production because this is a reflow solderable uh, part. This is something very very exciting that I'm going to tell you some more information about. And we've got some very exciting new array configurations such as a 64 channel device which I'll tell you a little bit more information on. And we're going to show at the end of the presentation we're going to give you a highlight, a little uh, uh, sneak, sneak peek into what's going to be uh, launched uh, by Sensel next year which is P on N blue sensitive silicon fault multipliers uh, which is now in trials and there were some results presented at the conference which we'll reference uh, from Stanford. So now I'll move in to, to tell you a little bit about silicon fault to multiplier economics and this is something that we feel passionately about here at Sensel um, and, and that is, is, is driving the volume of the technology as high as possible um, through our uh, high volume CMOS um, foundry partners who make our detectors. Um, our detectors are from the start designed for lowest cost and they're designed for uniformity and ultimately we give our customers the best customer support possible to aid in the prototyping stage uh, into the uh, volume ramp up stage and into the long term supply. It's something that we feel really makes up the core of the Sensel advantages and we think that we're the only company out there that is um, set up and is designed uh, to provide all of this to our customers. So to talk about some of the electrical and optical uniformity because this is something that's very very important if you're looking at uh, incorporating a lot of silicon fault multipliers into a product and trying to produce that in volume. Uh, due to our high volume CMOS processing capabilities uh, we have the best uniformity in the industry and what we're showing here on the left and right hand side of your screen is data that was taken from over 250,000 3 by 3 millimeter pixels and this is unbin data so this is just what was coming off of the wafers as they were they were produced and tested electrically and tested optically in our foundry and on the left hand side we're showing the breakdown voltage variation um, across the 250,000 parts and you can see that we're about a half a volt of operating voltage uniformity uh, across our entire product range uh, this means that all of our devices are operating with voltages that are very close to each other and can simplify your um, uh, your design a lot by by making so you can have one maybe one single power supply running across uh, a multi-pixel uh, system. Um, on the right hand side we're showing the optical output uniformity of our detector uh, and this is something I'll just give you a quick explanation of how we take and how we collect this data. 
um, all of our all 250,000 pixels, uh, while they're on wafer level, are biased at a constant bias voltage of 30 volts, and that's fixed across all of the pixels. And then what we do is we shine a constant illumination light source on, on, on each pixel, and we measure the current. And by doing that, we can measure something which is the optical output uniformity, which tells us how uniform is the output of our devices in response to light. And this is a real as-use condition um, uh, that, that, we, that we can actually measure at wafer level. And when we do this, we get something very exciting out over this 250,000 pixels. Uh, we find that the, the, the dispersion uh, across all the devices is, is, is better than plus or minus 10%. Uh, so all of the devices have an output response which is plus or minus 10% of, the, of the, the median of the population. So this means that all of our devices are outputting current in response to light at a constant voltage which is very, very uniform across, across our process. Now to talk about the technology um, that we produce our sensors on. Um, Sensil has uh, two core um, two core wafer types that we run on. The first on the left hand side is our N on P wafers and on the right hand side this is our P on N wafers. The N on P devices um, are, are sold as the L series technology and the M series technology. Uh, this L series is our base technology with a 495 nanometer peak sensitivity uh, this has been released and shipping for quite a while from Sensil. Uh, we're launching at the we launched at the IEEE uh, NSS MIC. The M series did a full launch of that product. Um, that is a uh, still an N on P device, but it's it's designed for higher PDE, and we have the option of a high resolution timing with our fast output, which I'll give you a little bit more information about in the coming slides. And what I'm going to show you uh, at the end of this presentation is the uh, B series which we are uh, working on and will launch in quarter one of 2013 and this is a device with the and a process with the maximum PDE that is possible in a CMOS boundary uh, targeting a 420 nanometer peak sensitivity and also providing very very high resolution timing to our customers. So these different types of technologies make up the core products uh, to suit all of the different markets that, that Sensil services. So some of the key takeaway messages that we would have talked to customers about during the, uh, the week of the conference uh, are on this slide. Um, the first is really to emphasize this is the, the, the M series that we're launching is the third generation silicon photomultiplier technology. It's very robust. It's been around for a while and in, in a lot of systems. Uh, the L has been in, is, is in a lot of systems and the M is a variant of that and uh, we expect that to be in a number of systems shortly. This device is now time of flight capable. Uh, that's something that Sensil are, are very uh, proud that we've been able to bring time of flight capability to our M series devices. And this uh, M series technology has very fast rise time and very fast recovery time. We think this is some of the best performance uh, figures uh, in the industry can be achieved with the M series fast devices. And as I've shown you before, uh, core to Sensil's device is excellent gain and an optical response uniformity and that's something that uh, is uh, true across all of our products. And something that's very very important in designing a system is how stable is your device in operation if the uh, if the temperature changes. And Sensil has uh, our M-series silicon fold multiplier has a temperature stability of, of only 20 millivolts per degree C and that's a very small um, uh, change in operating uh, voltage uh, is required uh, as the temperature varies across the device and this is something uh, which our device is industry leading in. Uh, the device as always is a low voltage operation. We, we operate with 30 volts bias. Uh, we're lower cost than a PMT and this product is now shipping in volume in a, in a number of packages which I'll tell you about. So to talk about uh, why the why and how of M-series improvements and what we've done to make this a uh, M-series device a time of flight detector. Uh, there's two things that you need to uh, work on if you're going to if you're going to produce a time of flight capable sensor. Uh, one of those is is PDE, and and the other is rise time of your sensor. So with PDE, um, you know improvements to PDE is going to lead to improved coincident resolving time um, because you're going to be able to see the photons better. 
Uh, how would you do this? Well, you're going to optimize your SPM fabrication process and device. That's something that Sensil has done. The rise time that comes out of the device is um, important because if you can reduce the output signal rise time, you can also improve improve the coincidence resolving time. And Sensil have created a new three terminal SPM with ultra fast rise time capability to to do this. And this is really important uh, to 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 discuss with with all of our customers because this improved PD and improved rise time can lead to very very good timing measurements with with our M series detectors. So to describe graphically how coincidence resolving time, uh, PDE, and, and signal rise time are linked, uh, we created these four sets of plots uh, shown here on, on the screen. And what we've done is, uh, for each of these four plots, we have uh, on the x-axis we have increasing SPM PDE to the right, and on the y-axis we have the SPM rise time um, uh, going up on the y-axis. So uh, top uh, left hand corner uh, this uh, plot talks about and shows the signal from the silicon fault multiplier with time for a device with a large rise time and and also a low PDE so this would be the worst detector and you can see that your dark events are shown here uh, rising and then falling off with the characteristic silicon fault multiplier uh, recovery time and then when your uh, crystal is illuminating, but if, if this is a medical image, imaging or hazard and threat application, uh, you can see that the, the signal uh, comes out of the, out of the ground uh, state and, and, in, and increases um, in intensity. And uh, what you're seeing here is the signal from, the representative signal from two detectors. So for a device with a low PDE and a large uh, SPM uh, rise time, you're going to get a very large delta T because the signal that's coming out is very low and the rise time, the slope of that signal is, is, is very slow. So with a level uh, trigger, uh, level triggering um, threshold circuit you're going to have a very very large delta T between your two signals. Now if you go over to the best scenario where you have a high PDE and you also have a device with a very very fast, very very short um, rise time. So it's a very fast device but it has a very, very short uh, rise time. You can see the dark signal uh, responding very quickly, going back down to baseline. And then what you can see is the signal from the scintillation, scintillating crystal comes uh, and is, is activated. You can see the two detectors are rising to the level trigger and are reaching it at the shortest delta T time. So if you compare the delta T from uh, this case, the worst case, to the delta T of the device with the highest PDE and the smallest rise time possible, then you can see that your delta T is much smaller um, for higher PDE and for low signal rise time. So to start off how we've improved the PDE in our devices from, from L series to the M series, we've got a graph here showing some of our 635 uh, millimeter pixels. Uh, so this is a six millimeter pixel with the 35 micron microcell inside that device. So this is the characteristic PDE curve uh, from 400 to 800 nanometers for the L-series device, uh, peaking here at around uh, 510, at about 16%. And we're showing that for the M-series device, peaking close to 20% um, with a 495 nanometer uh, peak sensitivity, which is good for a lot of crystals that are out there, uh, including lanthanum bromide and uh, cesium iodide and BGO. This device can perform very well for those, for those crystals. Um, and you can see how by changing the process and reducing the optical absorption layers at the surface of the detector, we've been able to improve the PD of our M-series detectors. Now, the other point we were talking about was how do we uh, improve the, the, the rise time of the device? How do we make it uh, the rise time as low as possible? So it's the fastest, fastest possible device that you can make. So what we've done is something that's really quite, uh, quite unique. Um, we're showing here on the, on the left-hand side a standard two-terminal silicon fault multiplier, uh, which has a cathode and an anode, as you would expect, 
um, and have com com come to know and, uh, and and love in silicon bolt multipliers. So this is showing the, 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 the different microcells all coupled together, one cathode, uh, and and one anode, and this is what Sensil would would market and brand as an SM device, which is a standard two-terminal silicon fold multiplier, um, and that has the characteristic rise and fall times um, of, of of associated with the uh, quenching capacitance resistance uh, inside the device. Now at Sensil, we realized um, a, a number of years ago that um, all of this um, quenching resistor. Um, the, the quenching resistor inside the microcell is very important for proper operation of the device, but to get the best signal out of the detector, you'd really like if that resistor was not there. Um, but it's needed to make the device work properly. So we created a new um, class of silicon fold multiplier called FM, or Fast Output Three Terminal Silicon Fold Multiplier, and we'll show you how we did that. We took the standard cathode and anode silicon fold multiplier and we introduced a small capacitor to each microcell in the silicon fold multiplier array and you can see each of the capacitors that are connected directly to the photosensitive photodiode in the microcell and we brought that capacitive uh, capacitively coupled um, microcell node out onto a fast output channel so the device has a cathode and an anode, just like a two-terminal SPM, but we've added a fast output, which is a capacitive coupling to the uh, photosensor inside the microcell. And this is really fundamentally changes how the silicon fold multiplier presents uh, you, the user, as uh, with with a signal, because uh, inside a silicon fold multiplier, uh, the avalanche initiation process. Uh, that goes on when a photon comes into the microcell. Um, that initiation is, is is happening on picosecond time scales. It's happening very, very, very quickly. Um, but normally, when you're looking at a two-terminal SPM, you've got all of the resistance and capacitance associated with the microcells and with all of the external nodes, and all of that really slows down the signal that you see. But inside, it's happening, and, and, and it, the avalanche process is occurring very quickly. So by introducing this very, very simple capacitor onto the microcell, we can now um, give you the ability to investigate and see what's going on inside the microcell, and you can get out really unbelievably fast uh, signals from this device, as I'll show you in the next couple of slides. So any products that you see from Sensil uh, that, are, that are branded as SM are M-series uh, silicon, standard mode, that means it's a two-terminal device, and any products which are branded as FM, so it's M-series silicon, uh, and that means that it has the three-terminal device. And for, for you as a user, you can choose to operate an FM device with just a standard cathode nanode, as before. Uh, you can ignore the fast output if you don't want to use it. Um, it's just a, it, it doesn't, it doesn't um, cause any negative effect to the device. It's there if you like it, but if you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it. Uh, but for customers who are doing fast timing applications, uh, you now have the option of using this fast output uh, to get uh, really incredible results from, from, from standard silicon fold multipliers. So just to show you how good this FM device is, uh, what we're showing here is our standard FM device, um, fast mode device, which is being pulsed with a very fast picosecond laser. And so this, um, this solid line, this very sharp, fast rise time, fast decay time, that's the output from an FM fast mode silicon fold multiplier. And we're showing on the same graph the output that is uh, using uh, the same uh, picosecond laser and shining that light on a standard silicon fold multiplier, an SM silicon fold multiplier. We show in the dashed line the output from a standard silicon fold multiplier. So you can see with an SM device, there's the rise time of the silicon fold multiplier, followed by the decay, which is the um, driven really by the internal uh, RC time constant of each of the microcells. And you can see with the fast mode device, you can see how when the laser light is hitting the detector, you've got a very hard, fast um, uh, rise time associated with the photon coming into the detector. And you can see that on the output node, uh, you've got a very fast, sharp uh, fall time uh, associated with the uh, 
fast mode output response uh, decaying back down back down to ground so this is something where you can now have for uh, devices from three to six millimeters or sorry from one to six millimeters uh, in size you can have rise times from 100 pic picoseconds to or less than 100 picoseconds to to several nanoseconds you can have short input response functions of one to two nanoseconds full width half maximum you have a reduced signal output capacitance um, greatly re reducing the output capacitance almost by an order of magnitude um, down to about 30 picofarads so that it's very easy for you to drive this and, and read out the signal uh, you can get higher count rate resolution ability uh, because now each of your photon pulses that are coming into the silicon photomultiplier are responding and going back to, to zero very quickly so that can increase the count rate ability and you very uniquely have the ability to very clearly distinguish the very first photon arrival time because this uh, fast mode output uh, is clear and easy to see above the noise even down to the single photoelectron level so we can see these very sharp fast pulses rise and falls time for each photon coming into the device um, at the single photon photon level so this is something that's very important for any timing application so to show you how the the FM device responds to LYSO because uh, clearly when you're looking at it with a laser pulse um, you can see how fast the device is operating but it's really good to see how this operates with uh, uh, with with an LYSO crystal signal so what we've done here is used a 3 by 3 by 15 millimeter cubed LYSO crystal and we've coupled that to a standard mode SM device and a fast mode FM detector and we're showing uh, with the dash line we're showing the standard mode output response and so this is showing as the LYSO crystal uh, um, responded to the gamma ray you can see how the uh, output rises and then falls off and, and that signal is a convolution of the output of the LYSO crystal combined with the uh, SPM response uh, and you can see it, it's, it's, that's a characteristic curve that you'd see from any standard mode, any standard two terminal uh, SPM, this is the type response that you would see now, if we go and look at that with the with the FM device, um, something really quite striking happens. And this is what we're showing here uh, with a solid line. That's our output from fast mode device. Um, and these, j just for clarity, the standard mode and the fast mode uh, signals, they actually do occur at the same time. But just for graphical representation, uh, we delayed the fast mode from the standard mode signal um, by about uh, 20 nanoseconds on the on the x-axis just to allow us to to distinguish it better but these are actually these would occur at the same time so don't please don't be confused about that it just allows us to represent the signal better on the screen here which but when you look at the fast mode output you can see this very very sharp fast rise time of the device and then you can see all of that decaying back down to your zero state after about 100 nanoseconds now that's a lot more characteristic of what's actually going on inside the LYSO crystal um, than a standard uh, two-terminal device. Um, and that's possible because you can trigger down on the single, uh, you're triggering down on the first few photons that are coming uh, into the SPM, uh, and then you're seeing the subsequent photons that are coming out of that LYSO signal uh, until basically all of the signal is gone. So this gives you, when you're setting up a timing system, this gives you the ability to trigger on the first photoelectron uh, by setting your threshold very low and one thing that we've been able to do with this technology improve is that it's also while it's it's a fast output it's also possible to get the energy resolution because all of the information is actually preserved within that pulse and so within this 100 nanosecond period um, if you integrate over that it's possible to get energy resolution um, which is the same as if you inter if you integrated over the whole uh, standard mode pulse for a very very long period of time and this gives you uh, very very good time of flight uh, resolution uh, capabilities as we're showing on this slide so what we're doing here is we're showing the coincidence um, resolving time um, for the M series device using the fast output and we're doing this for a 3x3 three by, three, uh, by 15 millimeter cubed LYSO and BGO crystal uh, so on the left hand side is LYSO and on the right hand side is is BGO and this is the CRT between two detectors so this is a folded measurement um, showing the actual coincidence resolving time between two three millimeter um, silicon volta multipliers and so for LYSO you can see that we're getting a full width half maximum of about 226 picoseconds and you can see for the BGO we're getting a full width half maximum of about 1.9 nanoseconds 
Uh, and so this is something with a detector um, that previously would have had about um, 750 to 800 picoseconds of, of CRT. Uh, with LYSO, using our fast mode output, we've been able to take a device, make a device which can um, have uh, 226 picoseconds full width half maximum. Uh, and there was some more information was presented um, in a talk given by Stanford uh, during the during the show. Uh, it was M13-2 timing performance of fast silicon fault multipliers, and that would be a talk we would we would ask you know we would recommend that you have a look at, and we've got the slides actually up on our website. Um, so you can view those slides if you if you would would care to, uh, but they did a lot more information uh, showing very similar results uh, in their lab that confirmed uh, this operation uh, and confirmed this low um, full width half maximum for the device. So in order to use this new M series device, uh, we're launching uh, the detector in in a, in a number of in a variety of packages. Some of them are old and some of them are new. Um, and what we're saying on this slide is that the M series is ready. Uh, for testing. We're here to help you um, in your prototyping stage and we're also here for volume. Uh, the M-Series is designed for volume and is currently available um, to, in volume to our customers. So the product is available with full documentation, data sheet and user manual we're showing here on the screen. Um, it's a very robust solution with large area arrays, uh, electronic modules and the new SMT package. Uh, we're showing you some of the surface mount packages here for the FM device in this big pile on the left hand side. This is some of the uh, surface mount micro FM SMA boards. Um, it's got the, the 3 by 3 millimeter detector on a board set up for rapid prototyping your lab. There's three of them shown here. And for customers who are looking for something a little bit smaller, we have our micro FM SM TPA board um, and we're showing the um, SMT, 3 millimeter SMT detector here. And this is the detector uh, mounted on a very small board um, with pins that allows you to uh, hook this up straight. You can hook this up to your oscilloscope, or you can hook this up, plug this into a board um, to do prototyping in your lab. So between the bare SMT detector, uh, the uh, micro FM SMA board, which is designed with SMA connectors, to the SMTPA, we've got a full range of solutions to take advantage of the new fast timing of the um, FM series detectors. And to show you some uh, really neat things that you can do with the um, SMT package, what we're showing here is the four-side tileable SMT package. Uh, on the top left-hand corner, you can see the top of the package here. It's a 4 by 4 millimeter um, clear uh, molded package. Uh, and this is, is showing the back of the package with the uh, four contact pads. Um, three of them are actually wire bonded out and used in operation. Um, and a fourth one is included there uh, simply for uh, placement uh, when you're doing PCB placement to make it so that it is uh, it's very robustly connected down onto your PCBs. So we're showing here on the top left hand corner uh, two of the top view of the SMT device showing the detector in the package and this is showing the back two of the back view of the device showing the four pads which will be connected onto a PCB. Uh, this is the CAD file uh, showing you the dimensions of that device. It's, it is well and truly a four by four millimeter package and what is exciting about this package is that uh, first off it's a four it's four side tileable package so customers can take this package and can produce any any size array that they require um, there's less than 500 microns from the detector edge to the package edge and this allows you to put this into very dense arrays it has a clear molded top surface it's very low profile uh, the whole package is only 0.6 of a millimeter thick and you can very closely couple the detector to your crystals because there's only 200 microns of, of dead space between the top of the silicon fault multiplier to the top of the package where the light is going to come in. Uh, and Sensil are currently providing this, uh, this device as tape and reel with 3,000 devices per reel. And we also provide some nice um, uh, prototyping options where you can get this in a tray from Sensil or in, or in baggie if you require for very small quantities. And right now the 3mm device is available in shipping uh, and the 6mm device is, is currently sampling um, 6mm version of the same, uh, same uh, similar package. And 1mm one mil one millimeter is in development and will be released in uh, early 2013. So something that's really neat with the SMT devices, now that you've got a surface mount uh, silicon fault multiplier, is uh, what you can do with this. So we're showing here on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, we're showing a 144-channel 
silicon fault multiplier array, which was created by placing the SMT device um, in it with an automatic pick and place, uh, just industry standard PCB uh, auto mount um, pick and place machine, placing the 144 uh, detectors, which came on tape and reel, placing them onto PCB board, and we um, were able to place them on a 4.2 millimeter pitch. So there's there's 200 um, microns of of dead space between each of the packages. Um, so the pitch between the die is 4.2 millimeters, and we were able to achieve across a PCB substrate um, a surface flatness. Of, of better than 200 microns across the uh, from all the corners uh, across the PCB. When we measured that, we got a surface flatness of, of better than 200 microns after it had gone through the the reflow soldering process and had been placed onto the board. So this is a very robust, simple way to make uh, large area arrays uh, that you can use to build up different uh, type arrays for whatever your system uh, requires. So, uh, as well as the, uh, the new SMT package for the 3mm device, uh, we've been working with some very, very large packages, large area packages for our 6mm pixel. And so what we're showing on this slide is the Array SM8 and the Micro SM635. And these are, are two different products which are using the same um, 635 series die. That's, so it's a 6 millimeter die with the 35 micron microcell. And our Array SM8, which is shown here on the top, this is a, a, a 8 by 8 array of the 6 millimeter die placed in a, in a single uh, um, PCB package with epoxy on epoxy on the surface. And what we're showing here is a eight um, array configuration where the detectors can be put into the into it where the arrays can be put into a block to make a much larger module for, for a certain application. So this device, this array is a four side scalable design. Uh, this can be obviously coupled into larger arrays. Uh, it has a seven millimeter pixel pitch, so inside the uh, actual array the, the pixels are put on a 7 millimeter pix pitch. Uh, there are 64 detectors in each of the arrays. Uh, it operates off of a, of a single 30 volt supply because our device is so uniform. Um, the output optical response uniformity is better than 10%. And this is something that can be reused to replace, um, say, an H8500, uh, R8900 C12, and the H9500 position sensitive fault multiplier tubes with something that's got better performance better uniformity, lower cost. Uh, this is a lot more robust solution than using a, uh, a PMT. Uh, this can give you some really good advantages when you go to put this into a system. So that's our 6 millimeter pixel put into a, a large array. That's showing you some of the things that, that uh, what it looks like. And then on the bottom, we're showing our Micro SM635, which is a single channel 6 millimeter pixel. And this is placed into a low cost ceramic package, shown here on the left hand side. Um, the, the epoxy overfill is about 500 microns. This operates off of a 30 volt supply, and we've got a full range of electronic uh, preamplifier boards um, which can be used to, to operate this device. So you can see with our, our 6 millimeter um, SM device, uh, you can see how we place this into a number of packages suitable for the different types of applications. Um, at this time, the, uh, the Array SM8 is only available in a SM mode, so it's a standard mode device, so it's a two-terminal silicon fault multiplier. Um, but when we release the surface mount version of the 6 millimeter pixel, um, we will be able to provide the 6 millimeter pixel um, uh, with uh, fast mode output as well uh, for very, very fast timing applications. So to talk about some of our uh, standard mode uh, three millimeter pixel products we have on this slide are Array SM4 and our Array SM4P9. And the Array SM4 is something that we've been uh, producing for, for a number of years. Um, it's a ceramic package which is designed for MR compatibility. It's designed for simultaneous MR uh, compatibility at 1.5 up to 3 Tesla. Uh, this is a four side scalable design so you can put this into a larger array if you like. 
Inside the uh, ceramic package, each of the 3 millimeter pixels is on a 3.36 millimeter pitch. So there's only about 200 microns of dead space in between the pixels, so it's very tight inside the package. Uh, there's 16 pixelated channels coming off this device, and you can operate this with a single 30 volt supply if you like, because the optical uniformity uh, is better than better than 10%. Uh, and this is something we've got a full range of electronics to bias the device up for bias control and also to provide signal conditioning for, uh, for the output. So this is showing an array uh, SM4 with the electronic chain behind that. Um, signals would come off uh, this connector and power for the array uh, comes off and the, and the amplifiers can come off uh, this uh, from this uh, small connector on the left hand side of the product. So this is something that's a very simple product um, that's very full featured giving a, a MR compatible package uh, the SM high performance standard mode silicon and full electronics uh, and readout systems so that you can uh, build up uh, a PET system very easily. Uh, this detector and electronics are built into a number of uh, preclinical and brain systems uh, around the world and we've had a lot of success uh, with the the Array uh, SL4 product and we wish to continue that with the new uh, higher performance SM silicon. So this is this product has a nice refresh for 2013 with the SM the addition of the SM silicon. The Array SM4 P9 I'll just talk briefly about. Um, this product is a is a PCB based product with a connector on the back uh, which uses nine of the Array SM4s inside, as you can see here. Um, it's a 144 channel device. It's four side scalable, operating off of a single 30 volt supply. Um, and this gives you very, very good optical response non-uniformity of, of better than 10%. So it's very uniform across the entire array. And this is something which can be a 3 millimeter pixel alternative to the, the, uh, some of the position-sensitive fault-to-multiplier tubes from Hamamatsu, like the H8500, uh, R89C12, and the H9500. This is a really good alternative to some of those devices. And the uh, array SM4P9 is designed into a number of uh, breast and brain uh, and preclinical scanners. Um, that are uh, being uh, that are being worked on at the moment um, with with very very good results. So that product is also refreshed by the addition of the new um, SM series silicon, and this M series will give it a, a higher PDE than the previous um, L version of the product. But all of the the good things about the product, the uniformity, the voltage supply, 30 volts, all of that is still maintained. And uh, carrying on with our with our three millimeter uh, pixels, the uh, Matrix SM9 module for PET will also get a refresh with the new M series silicon coming into that product. So this product is now known as the Matrix SM9, and this product is is a really exciting product for Sensel uh, because this was done in partnership with Analog Devices, and the the product consists of uh, 144 three millimeter um, uh, SPM pixels. Uh, so we take the array um, SM4P9 detector head that I showed you on the previous slide. So this detector head um, is shown here and we combine that with a front-end electronics board which takes the signal in, conditions it, um, uh, is able to capture the crystal ID from the crystals that are used on top of this detector. It's able to timestamp the arrival time of the photon and it's able to provide the energy um, out to the digital um, 50 megahertz LVDS digital line at the back of the back of the detector. So this front-end electronics board is used in our readout module and that connects to our coincidence board which can have 16 of the readout modules can couple to one coincidence board and can be coupled over USB uh, to a simple PC to provide very nice PET system. Uh, so this is available either boxed um, as shown here on the left-hand side or as the bare electronics and detector head so that the customers can design their own systems um, in, an, in an OEM fashion uh, and also it's provided with a linear array of the, the, the detectors uh, to suit the different applications. So this is something that we've got some really uh, we've got a nice poster that was presented at the IEEE NSS MIC from UC Davis. It was poster M21-32. 
which was evaluation of the Matrix 9 for small animal pet, uh, and that showed that with this this product we could achieve uh, 1.5 millimeter crystal resolution with LYSO, and could get really good pet response um, out of this uh, Matrix uh, Matrix 9 system. So that's something that would encourage you to go on our website and have a look at those slides, and and download that and have a view of what UC Davis was able to do. Uh, with this product. So that's a very exciting product we recommend you to have a look at if you're prototyping or designing a new uh, new pet system. So to summarize some of the sensor array options, uh, we've shown here on the, the top half of the screen uh, sensor arrays. So these are arrays that current sensor is currently producing and supplying to the market. And on the bottom half we're, we're contrasting that with customer produced arrays, which are arrays of, that you can produce as a customer using our SMT product. So the top product here is the Array SM4P9 335. So it's a 3 millimeter pixel, as I've already explained to you. It is a standard mode output. And inside each of the um, Array 4s, which are used in the product, um, the detector is on a 3.35 millimeter pitch uh, inside each of the Array SM4s. Obviously, there's a bit of a gap here at the edge of the Array SM4, but uh, inside the Array, it's on a very, very tight pitch. The 6 millimeter pixel array is the Array SM8 635 PCB. Um, this is a standard mode device as well. And each of the 6 millimeter pixels is on a 7 millimeter pitch inside the array. Um, and so that is something that can be used to design a very large um, module with 6 millimeter pixels. Now, contrasting that with the SMT. Uh, arrays, which can be produced by our customers. We're showing here a, an example, uh, which we produced uh, in our lab, which is a 3 millimeter pixel uh, array of 144 elements. Uh, and then when you do this, yeah, you have something which is fast mode output capable. So it's possible to pull off the standard and the fast mode outputs from the, from the SMT uh, part. And inside this, using just industry standard design rules to actually do the placement of the SMTs, we're able to get a 4.2 millimeter pitch of our array. So that contrasts to the 3.35 inside with the array SM. With the micro FM placed into a customer produced array, uh, we would expect you to get about 4.2 millimeter pitch. Um, but that pitch is uniform from one corner to the other. Uh, the pitch can be 4.2 millimeters. And that's something that's, that's very exciting. Uh, new option for our customers to produce fast mode output arrays uh, with a 4.2 millimeter pitch for a 3 millimeter pixel. The 6 millimeter SMT devices, which are coming and um, sh are shipping to customers uh, prior to the end of 2012, so that's something that is, is shipping uh, prior to the end of this year. That is a 6 millimeter pixel. Uh, the package looks the same. We had this product at this time; it just wasn't ready at the time of the, uh, at the time of the conference, so it's not included in these slide decks. We'll have to make another presentation that has those. But this is a 6 millimeter pixel. It's fast mode output, just like the 3 millimeter device. And when you put that into an array, you can achieve a 7.4 uh, millimeter pitch can can be achieved inside um, in, inside your inside your device.